everybody, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and my guest today is J.L. Fields. She is the founder and culinary director of the Colorado Springs Vegan Cooking Academy. She is a vegan lifestyle coach and educator, a food for life instructor, and a chef instructor in the culinary program at the University of New Mexico, Taos. JL is the author of The Vegan Air Fryer, The Healthier Way to Enjoy Deep Fried Flavors and Vegan Pressure Cooking, Delicious Beans, Grains, and One Pot Meals in Minutes. Those are actually two different books, but I made it sound like they were one, and I have both of them, and they're fabulous. She's the co-author of Vegan for Her, The Woman's Guide to Being Healthy and Fit on a Plant-Based Diet, and JL produces and hosts a weekly radio show pro program, Easy Vegan, and writes the monthly vegan dining review for the Colorado Springs Gazette. You are one busy woman. (laughs) (laughs) All those plants. Yeah. I love your hair, by the way. It's a little bit different than when I saw you, and it's adorable. Oh, thank you. I love love short-haired girls. I'm one of those. So so I am so excited, and I'm so excited to interview you, and I'll tell you why. I've I've interviewed you before with your other book, but it was on the phone, and it's not really helpful if you cook on the phone because nobody can can see. And so JL is actually going to cook something today. She's going to show us how to use the air fryer. So three months ago for my birthday, I received a Cook's Essential air fryer for my birthday, and it's the reason I got the Cook's Essential only is because it's purple. I mean, I I knew nothing about air fryer. (laughs) but my friends knew I love purple so they got me a purple one and since then because I do these weekly Facebook live uh, interactions called weight loss Wednesday people are like what's the best air fryer and I can't answer this I mean I could but it's not my area of expertise so when I have a question I go to the expert so congratulations because you're I think you're the first vegan chef to have an air frying book and uh, so this is this is really wonderful so uh, how did you even get into air frying all of a sudden it's like the rage right it is, yeah. It was a total accident. About about a year ago, I been starting to hear about them among the vegan groups, you know, the Facebook groups. I'm a member of a group called Power to the Veg, and everyone was putting up these amazing photos. And one day, you know, so I kind of have a, a, an attachment to uh, gadgets. I just said, okay, you guys, convince me that air frying is the way to go. And everyone just started posting all of these gorgeous right. pictures yeah. of fried food with using little to no oil. And finally, I just did. I went on Amazon. I ordered it. I got it. And I, of course, made, I, I, I joke around. When I walked into the door, the front door of the condo, I'm carrying this big box, and my husband looks at me, and he says, are you bleeping kidding me? Because <laughs> it's like one more gadget, right? And I didn't say a word. I just walked into the kitchen, cut up a potato, made uh, homemade french fries, put them in front of him, and he said, this is the best thing you ever bought. And and you know what? Oh, my God. JL, my husband is the same way. And, you know, we travel a lot. And a lot of the places we are that I speak are not vegan. And so they're not giving me enough food. They're specifically not giving me enough starch. So when I travel, I'm traveling with my Instant Pot and now my air fryer so I can be making fries in my hotel room. And it really is the greatest thing. And neither of us are affiliated with any particular company. We get nothing for telling you to buy it. It's just, you know, these companies, unlike Instant Pot that actually will, like, you know, answer you. None of the air frying companies even answer any of us. I think because I've talked to a few other vegan chefs, but there's many more. Like, like I feel like with pressure cooking, your other book, by the way, uh, the pressure cooking book is wonderful. And I was going to even ask you if I could use one of my recipe, one of your recipes in my next book because I make your broth from scraps all the time. You have oh, saved cool. me so much money with that recipe and so much packaging. <laughs> uh, you know, like with pressure cooking, I do recommend the Instant Pot first and foremost. I think it's the best yes. one I've used. But with, with, with air frying, I have no idea. When people say to me, what's the best one? I say the best one you can afford, but certainly right. the biggest. Because what I did find, JL, is when my friends gifted me this, they gave me the three-quart that is too small. That what didn't yeah. make enough food for me. And so QVC allowed me to exchange it, and I got the 5.3 quart, and it's barely enough food for me. So I'm thinking if you have a family, you know, maybe you could talk about the di- difference in in the air fryers and what do people look for when they get one. Because I always just say, always say the best one you can afford, the biggest and best yeah. one you can afford. And I, I say the same thing, too. And I will say in um, full disclosure, you know, I'm on a book tour right now, and so the company GoWise is my book tour sponsor. But I only, and I say that because I want to be transparent, but I'm a big fan of promotion versus attraction, which isn't to say I don't self-promote. That's not what I mean. But I, the very first air fryer I bought was a GoWise. Okay. So when I knew I was going on a book tour, I got in touch with GoWise and said, I'm writing a book. I'm going on a book tour. I'm going to need to air fry while I'm on the road. You want to help me out? So they have been helping me out, nice. which is awesome. Nice. Um, and, you know, at least I know I'm using the, the, the one that I got. The size question is super important. I've been doing a lot of cooking demo classes now. 
with the air fryer. And I always tell people, if you're, a, if you're one or two people, a 3.7 quart could be just fine. Unless you're like me and you like to play around with gadgets and do things like put an apple pie, a, an individual serving ceramic in your air fryer. Whatever you can put in your oven, you can put in an air fryer. You could bake in this. Right. So you need one big enough to hold something like this. And right. so you do want to think about you want to think about that. But the price points really range anywhere from sixty dollars to hundreds of dollars. Mm -hmm. And it really is what I like about it is it's much more it's very accessible that mm -hmm. wherever you are with the you know, in the economic range, you can afford one. You can go to Bed Bath & Beyond and use mm -hmm. a 20% certificate, you know, sure. get for one. And, um, and, I, and, and what I tell people, I always feel like I'm doing a, a, an info brochure. Whenever you, you know, because you use an Instant Pot. Yeah, you feel sometimes like you're doing an info brochure. Absolutely, like, but I really love the product, and, and, I, yeah. and that's the truth. Yeah. And it's the tool that you use. Right. So it's, it's that's, everything. you know. And for me, you can't tell, but I'm actually, I'm in a condo in Colorado Springs. And so right above me is my bedroom. It's a lot. Wow. Here's my kitchen. If I fried something here, I would smell it up there all night long. Mm -hmm. And then these windows, you can't tell. I don't have air conditioning here. Colorado Springs didn't need it. This doesn't hold an air conditioning unit. So I bought the air fryer because I can bake yep. without turning on my oven. Yep. I can fry with little to no oil and not sink up my house. And so to me, it's worth $60, 70 $90. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I say the same thing because in the time it takes me to just preheat my oven, to make oven, you know, to bake, bake French fries, I'm done in the air fryer. It exactly. almost takes that time. And, and it's, it's just, it's, and, and I find that it's just, I don't know, it's, it's like magical. It's like, it's just more delicious. I, I mean, what it, do they do? It, what, what is an air fryer? What, is there somebody in there doing something and adding oil or salt? Because like even things I don't like, like for example, I, I mean, these don't look like anything special. These are just mushrooms. Now, I never was a fan of mushrooms. I would eat them, but it was like, eh. But even stuff I don't like, when I air fry it, something happens magical that now I love mushrooms. And even though these don't look like, I mean, these don't look like the greatest thing in the world, they taste like the mushrooms they make at True North. They're juicy, they're tender. Mm. What does an air fryer do that makes everything so good? Well, there are little wizards inside. I no. think so. Well, that's what I keep thinking. I have so many questions for you, but I would like you to start whatever recipe you're making because I know okay. it will take about 20 minutes and then we'll get back yes. to talking about it. Perfect. And then and as I'm doing that, I will tell you what magic actually happens. So what I'm making for you today is actually some tofu. So I have this in a tofu press. I got a little marinated here. Now I will tell you that I've made, I made one in advance that I'm going to show you later. This one is going to have just a teeny smidge of oil. And when I say smidge, you're going to see me use it. I'm going to use a spray can wow. where I just barely miss the tofu. And it's to keep the tofu from sticking and to keep the breading on and to give it a little golden texture. But spoiler alert, I made a batch of tofu with zero oil before we got on here. So I'm going to show that to you later too. But I love these tofu presses because not only can I press all the water out of the tofu, my marinade has been sitting in there. This is simply tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce, and some rice vinegar and a little grated ginger. That's all I have. And that what sounds I have, great. It's really yummy. It has lots of flavors. So all I'm going to do now is just drain. I'm going to be with you just a minute. I moved everything around so I could be by my sink and cook and be on Skype at the same time. Right. So now I'm going to put the tofu in this bowl. And I'm going to add a few things that I pre-measured. So I'll show you here. Oh, so I've got my tofu. Can you see it? Yep, absolutely. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of potato starch on it. This is going to add, I'm trying to go for the tofu you get at the Chinese mm -hmm, restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Like the, like the crispy and, tofu, right? Yes, exactly. It's going to be crisp and puffy on the outside. It's going to be nice and meaty on the inside. And then I'm going to do some chickpea flour. What I like about the chickpea flour is it's going to add to sort of that crunchiness on the outside, but it also, that protein kind of helps, a protein flour kind of helps bind everything mm -hmm. and stick together. And all I'm going to do is toss it. And so, it's nice, and it's got this like these big chunks that we love. I tell people, if for no other reason, if you eat plant-based or vegan, you want an air fryer for tofu and french fries, yeah. if nothing else. French fries, <laughs> for sure. And, and, and I might add for one other thing. Yes. Corn. 
Oh, my God. I know. The pictures you've been showing on Facebook are amazing. And by the way, uh, JL has a wonderful Facebook group called Vegan Air Frying Enthusiasts. And, and yeah. a lot of questions can get answered there once people get their air fryer and want some help. And yeah. I don't I don't even use any seasoning sometimes. I know. And it looks so good. Everyone's obsessed with that. It looks great. Notice how quickly the coating sticks to that. That's all I'm trying to do is mix this around. This is my basic tofu recipe that's in the book. And then I'm going to put it, actually I'm going to show you and then show your viewers. So the air fryer basket has holes on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So imagine McDonald's and you set those french fries down and you're like, ew, look at all that grease, look mm -hmm. at all of that. These holes emulate that only in the sense that rapid hot air in the air fryer is going to circulate around the food. That's what makes it crisp. And that's, so that's why people should magic. people should not cover the holes. Tell people that. They don't believe yes. it. They think, oh, well, it'll be easier to clean. No, 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 no. Or they buy these yeah. little things with holes. No, you don't want to do that, right? You don't. And not only that, it's not, I mean, these are so easy to clean anyway. No, they you, really are. You can put the basket in a dishwasher. I want to show you guys. So here's a little oil that I want you to see how quickly and how little I'm going to use. That's it. And is that, that, is that extra firm tofu that you're using? Yes, okay. extra firm tofu. So I'm going to put it in the air fryer, and I cook it on 350 for 20 minutes. Now, some people go a little um, higher temperature, and I'm going to actually just start it for 10 minutes, and then I'll shake it. Some people go higher temperature, and it can get done. And it's great. It's got that crunch to it. It's yummy. But if you want that really nice, puffy exterior, and meaty interior, I really encourage going lower temperature, longer cooking time. So I do this for 350 uh, for 20 minutes. Okay, good. Well, that's what's going to be my next question because having never read the book or talked to someone with your expertise, I just do everything for 20 minutes at 400, which is probably not correct. But how, like, what is the range of temperatures on the air fryers? Is there a range and is, yes. there, is there like a time limit? Yeah, and that's a great question. And you know, truthfully, you can't go wrong with that. My friend Michelle Donner, um, they, we hired her to do the photos for the cookbook. Oh, yeah. They're, and she they're laughed every time I yeah. sent her. I know. Her photos are just yeah. terrific. And look how enticing this is. That person this picture I have on my wall. It makes me so that happy. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> the fried person is on the back. This looks beautiful. like a recipe I make. Look at the Brussels sprouts. Yeah. I mean, Brussels, Brussels sprouts in an air fryer. Game changer. Yeah. If you hate yep. Brussels sprouts, it's because you don't have an air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's the cool thing. People think that it's just for frying food, but no. actually... It's for um, roasting, braising, broiling, baking, reheating. And oh my God! So one time I went to this restaurant this year, actually with Dr. Doug Lyle, called Real Food Daily, and I was just so full I, I really could barely eat my dinner, which was it was like it was quinoa, it was some steamed kale and some steamed vegetables, nothing special. So I took it home, and the next day I put it in the air fryer, and it was like it was better than when it was at the restaurant. It's true. I you know texture. Mm -hmm. Texture. Don't you think, and you can see you like your instant pot like I like my, I, I pressure cook too. And the one thing I noticed that I think was kind of missing in, in some of the foods I was cooking is I was so used to doing my beans and my grains. I wanted texture. And that's why I love teaching these classes mm -hmm. right now because I'm usually talking to people who aren't vegan or right. who aren't plant based. And so I'm like, let's find a food that seems very familiar to you and let's give you a texture that feels meaty. Like kind of thinking umami. In the texture range, and and I think that and I think that's why vegans are kind of going nuts for it because all of a sudden they're like, wow, I don't have to put it in all of this grease or oil, and I can still have a yummy French fry or the Hasselback potatoes that mm -hmm. are in that. Oh range. yes. Oh, they're fantastic. I know. You know. Oh, my God. Absolutely. That crisp. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I actually, I got the Go Wise on Amazon for Mary McDougal for her birthday. And so I know it's a good unit. I, I, you know, I yeah. don't know anything about really what the difference is or what people should look for. I mean, are the baskets nonstick? Are, are, they, are they made of different materials? Like, like for example, yeah. a pressure cooker, you can get a, a nonstick. You can get a stainless steel insert. I just know that for size, I can't imagine the three-quart being big enough really for anyone other than a small right. child. But, well, <laughs> and as, as I, I definitely say for a family of more than two to get the 5.8 quart. And I know at one point you had even been thinking about that 10 quart. Yeah, I did. I eventually I did, but at some point I'm going to look into that. It's just because I live in a small apartment, and, and again, right now all my appliances are on the floor, and that's the only yeah. reason. It's not money. It's it's just the lack of space. But yeah, that really, exactly. if both my husband and I want to eat fries. The f it's not enough. It's only enough yeah. for one at a time. So that's the yeah. only thing. And I don't want to have to get two. 
Well, and you bring up a good point because one of the biggest complaints, I know you've seen it too, on the vegan air frying enthusiast Facebook group is people are, are frustrated with their fries. And what I do think is sometimes they overcrowd the potatoes when they put them in the air fryer basket. So a couple of things that are really important when you're making french fries in the air fryer is to not overcrowd, right. but to also make sure that the, 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 the potato slices are consistent in size. Yes. So a french fry cutter is a great way. You can get a handheld, you know, push down kind of like an apple core. You can get one of those for $10. My food processor has a french fry blade. A lot of mandolins have french fry mm -hmm. blades. And so that is important, the size, not overcrowding, right. and remembering to shape. So I'm going to show you what shape means. A lot of recipes for air frying are going to say, cook for 20 minutes, shake every five minutes. Shake simply means this. You open it up, and you shake it. Oh, you can already hear that. Oh, yeah, it. it's already getting nice. And it's already getting nice. And but yeah. you just shake it, and that's how you, cut, you, cut, you keep it moving. But, um, and so that's one of the tricks with, with the french fries. Some people think they need to use the oil. You actually don't. There are a couple of tricks you can do. Um, I have I buy these little bottles. This is a little glass bottle, and this one's marked veggie broth. Mm -hmm. I put veggie broth. I've done um, the Bragg's liquid amino mm -hmm. is it here. I have one where I put aquafaba. Oh. Aquafaba from chickpea um, chickpeas is actually a great way to add uh, golden crust to French fries. And so it's sometimes putting a little something, but it doesn't have to be oil. But you want to shake it consistently. You, you know what I found, and, and again, like I'm really a novice at this. I've been doing it less than three months, but I am using it every day, just like I use my instant pot every day. And I found this quite by accident. Is when I travel, I always travel with cooked potatoes and sweet potatoes, just because you never know. And I came right. home from a trip. And I had leftovers, and I wasn't going to yeah. throw them away. And I didn't, I'm like, eh, do I really want to microwave these? Eh, they're cooked, you know? And so I figured, oh, I'll put them in the air fryer. And it was like magic because it made them much crispier than had I started with raw potatoes. And so now, right. whenever I do sweet potato fries or French fries, I cook it first. And I've created what I call bread. It's not really bread, but for people that, like myself, that don't eat bread or flour, I found that when I take the sweet potato, any kind, it can be the Hannah yam, the garnet, the. Um, the Japanese, the Hawaiian, the Stokes, and then I, I smash it with my hand as flat as possible. And then oh. when I air fry it, 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 it's like eating bread. It's like eating like pastry. It's like crispy and caramelized. And, and I oh. love my food. Don't get me wrong. Even though I eat a simple diet and people would say that it's extreme or not tasty, I've loved my food. And now yeah. with the air fryer, it's like having food gasms. And again, you know, these <laughs> air fryer people should be giving us free air fryers for saying this because we don't get anything, but we do think the food tastes amazing in the air fryer. Yeah. So, so here's what I get from people. And uh, it drives me crazy on my show, Weight Loss Wednesday, that people like, you know, the idea is, is to eat as healthy as you can. And I, I mean, I think, and some people, if they're sick, they maybe need to eat healthier sooner, but people major in minor things and they worry about like, well, if I air fry my mushrooms, won't I increase the caloric density? And it's like, who cares? Who cares? I mean, if a food is like 60 or 100 calories a pound, and even if you increase it to 200 calories a pound, if the air fryer is no different. But people aren't understanding is the air fryer is no different than your oven. It's basically right. like an easy bake oven. It's a small portable oven that cooks in less time without generating heat. So true, if you weren't going to cook your vegetables a different way, then don't, but don't blame the air fryer for, for making foods right. less healthy. I mean, it, it, if anything, I look at it as I want people to eat more vegetables, especially. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty easy to get people to eat french fries. And if having a tool like an air fryer can make even a vegetable I hate take, taste delicious or Brussels sprouts, that's a great reason to use it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and that used to happen with pressure cooking, too. They're like, it can't be good for the food. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to eat food in 12 minutes and I'm going to eat, like, beans from that have been dry and grains. I'm willing to take that chance, right. but... Absolutely. You know. And, and, you know, Dr. Gregor has, has actually sent me a medical research article that said that pressure cooking actually is more favorable for nutrient retention because it is done in so much more more quickly. But then, exactly. you know, there are some of these naysayers that are like, well, you shouldn't brown your food, acrylamides, and it's like, you know what? I, I don't know. I did, that's I like my food crunchy and crispy. Right. Like you said, that's a texture I've been missing. And as much as I love salads and soups and stews, there is nothing like biting into a hot 
French fry. That it's just it totally agree. Just, and I agree with the, you know I, I was seeing those posts on your Facebook group of which I'm a member. Of people like saying, "Well, it didn't slay me. I don't know what you guys are talking about." And I looked at their fries, and like you say, they weren't cut the way mine were. Mine are cut like you know they're not these huge wedges. They're they're the same size, and I I don't crowd them because that that's the right. thing. I, I I make another batch, but I you know I really feel like like that that commercial perfect rice every time. I mean, really I perfect <laughs> rice. And if they're not perfect, you can always. You know, it's like the same thing with the Instant Pot. It's like, well, what if what if it doesn't cook? Well, you put it back on and you push the button. If, and the, the great thing about the air fryer is when you open it to shake it, it doesn't disturb the setting. It just goes right back to where it was. Exactly, exactly. And, hey, if you have a french fry that didn't get as crispy as you want, you know what you can do with them? Make a delicious white bean gravy and put that over it. And it's like Putin from right. Um, right. Canada. And you just have beans and, and potatoes. What's better than that? And you know, you know what I say? If you have a french fry that didn't get crispy, that's a first world problem, people. Right. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, like, oh, get the violin, you know? So, you know, I, I when I look at your book or any of the recipes that are posted on your Facebook group, how do you or anyone determine, well, why is this at 350? And, you know, like, I never understood... And I really didn't understand it with the Instant Pot either because I tend to just be the one button kind of person. But how, when you're creating a recipe or when somebody watching this wants to do that, do you decide what temperature and, and how long you're going to air fry for? That's a great question. No one's asked me that. I'm really glad you did. So I want to tell you this much as you say, you know, you're new to air frying. I started writing my book three months after I had an air fryer. So wow. I basically learned how to air fry while I was writing the book. And as you know, when you write a book, there's a lot of research. And so what I decided to do was, I'm like, okay, so for those of us who haven't been frying food in our homes, either because we're, we're you know, going less oil or because we don't want the place to stink up from it and make a mess, we're, we're probably opting for baking. So the, the formula for baking, like if you were going to um, have something that you baked in the oven, but you want to make an air fryer, the formula is reduce the, the temperature by 30 degrees, reduce the cooking time, in half. So what I did was I would say, okay, so if baked fries were, you know, if I were going to do that at about 375, I'm going to bring it down to 350. Um, and so that would be one way to sort of reduce the, the the temperature. And then it was hit or miss. Sometimes I'd be like, you know what, I want a little bit higher, like kale chips. I didn't know what to do with kale chips. All I can tell you is kale chips are amazing oh my God. in the air fryer. So but crunchy. Yeah. You have to be really careful. They right? can burn because very they they, they, up to the right. and they they can crumble. Yeah, really yeah. quickly. Yeah. Ooh, let's see. Oh, look at that! Ten oh minutes in the air fryer. Oh, Isn't that gorgeous? God. And then I want to show you because some people say, "Well, is there a difference between using oil or not?" Now these are only halfway done, but you see that it's getting nice and brown. But I want you to see what the tofu looked like that I used, where I used no oil. Look at that um, cut. I don't that know if you can hear it. It looks amazing. That could be, people could eat that. They could dip it in a sauce. They could put it in a salad. It looks like yes. fried tofu from a Chinese restaurant without any Well, oil. And, and then you can do, I have a really simple sauce um, recipe in the book, but it's, I mean, I'll just tell you because it's so easy. Soy sauce and water and maybe a splash of rice uh, wine vinegar. Put that on your sauce in a saucepan and transfer this into it. And you just made Mongolian tofu. Wow. And so you can really, you know, you can take it, take oh, things it in is. or put things in your house. Here it is yeah, in your that's book, it. Mongolian tofu. Yeah. It almost looks like the Ma Pao tofu from P.F. Chang's. You know, the recipe in your book that I wanted to try the most, I couldn't because acorn squash is not in season right now, but you had a recipe oh, yeah. for an amazing acorn, acorn squash with, with this sauce. And I'm like, oh, I want to try it. And I couldn't find the acorn, acorn squash. Air, I'm calling everything acorn. Air, is, there, is, there, is there anything that just won't work in an air fryer as far as you know? Well, you know, somebody asked me that the other day, and, and I can't really think of any hardcore fails. I think that some things might not turn out the way you want. Like I was really hoping with the Brussels sprouts, I'm like, well, I'm assuming I can roast them. And I would normally, you know, cook them on a really high temperature. And I'm doing them anywhere between 370 and 390. And they came out great. Um, I have some things that, um, you know, I made a point to call the book healthier versions of uh, your favorites. And so there's some things in there that have batter on them. Like, I have a vegan corn dog. I'm not going to lie. I'm from yeah, the Midwest. No, it's we okay. Have, like, you don't have to have, have corn dogs. And, um, but, you know, it's batter works. Yeah. Fried hot um, dogs. Oh, that's the, is that the fried hot dogs? That's dog? the fried hot dogs, yeah. So, you know, um, you're from New York, aren't you? Chicago. 
You're from Chicago. So I, you know, Chicago Dogs. I lived in Chicago. And then there was this place in New York, Walter's Hot Dogs, that always did these fried hot dogs where they split them and fried them. And I'm like, I bet you I could do that in the air fryer. And it totally worked. Right. <laughs> and you gave that, I mean, just, you know, the idea, see, here's the thing. So I don't need oil. You use a little oil, but I can do this without oil. And just the ideas I, I, that you're giving me in this book, like who would have ever thought, I make sushi, whoever thought would, really, you know, there's an old joke, you know, I used to be a pastry chef at a restaurant. And look at this the baked apple oh my god you know there's an old joke at the restaurant that when something isn't selling you know they used to say put bacon and cheese on it and then it would right. sell and i always feel like if you make a dish at home or something you don't enjoy eating the answer is to air fry it, is it just i think you're right yeah. well i've done that with leftover rice that's how i ended up deciding to put a, a a fried rice recipe mm -hmm. and, and and some people might wonder how because right the air fryers have uh, i'm going to show you a, a, a something there's a couple ways, you know, the air fryer tap holes in the bottom. And so, yeah, if you put rice on there, it might not stick. Well, look at these parchment papers with holes in the bottom. Uh -huh. So that is a way to put food that's a little wet or a little loose. You can put it on the bottom and then move it. But I'll tell you what, if you have leftover brown rice that you made from bulk cooking over the weekend and you have some vegetables in your refrigerator, Combine them together and throw them in your air fryer, and it's absolutely okay. Amazing. I'm doing that, but you recommend then because rice is so small to get one of those pads. Yeah, and you don't have. I mean, you can make your own, right? So some genius came up with this idea to make parchment paper put holes in the bottom, and, and that and that is that. safe to use, even if your yeah. air fryer is a different shape. You can cut it to fit. Yes, this is the thing you need to do if you're adding parchment paper or foil into the air fryer, you need to cut it down so it is the size of the basket because what happens is at the top, of, inside the air fryer, the heating element is on top. You don't want anything to get too close to that heating it could element. could burn, right. Like kale chips, right? right? That's what I say. So when you're making kale chips, you gotta keep an eye on it, keep shaking it. So, but the same with parchment paper. So yeah, and, and that's a great way to do foods like if you're doing like a tempura or if you were doing like a um, panko, breaded eggplant or something, um, then you would you might want to have a piece of parchment paper to get it started. And then once it starts to brown and things start to kind of stick together, then you can remove it so you still get that golden color. And where do you buy those? On Amazon? Or, and what are they called? I got it on Amazon. What's, it's, what's it called? Do you know like the name you know of it? What? Actually, it wasn't designed for an air fryer, but they're smart. So now they say air fryer. These are actually designed to be at the bottom of um, steam baskets that Chinese restaurants use. When you eat your dumplings. Ah, so sure. if you just look for, um, but truthfully, if you uh, put in perforated parchment paper, this is going to come right, up now. That, that, so, uh, you know, I, okay, again, going back to majoring in minor things, I don't worry about nonstick. It's not that I have all nonstick cookware. I have one piece that I've had for years and it's not yes. it, it chipped in any way. So it, are the, it, are, are different companies different, but are those basket Teflon, are they nonstick? And are there stainless steel options for people that are worried? Or I don't know much about the different ones. I, like I say, I only have the one I have. Yep. I've used several. And there is one brand, to my knowledge, I'm sure there are more so, no one um, you know, come after me. Uh, but the one that I know that has a, state, that has a mesh wire basket is Phillips. So that one is what some people who are concerned about Teflon um, will use. I have used Philips. I've used GoWise, which has the tough one. Almost any other one I've used, Barberware, Della, Power XL, have Teflon. Now, here's the thing about Teflon. I'm the same with you. Like, I figure something's going to kill me, and I just have told everybody, your job is to put it on my tombstone. What, what was it that killed me? Yeah. Um, but, you know, was it the Teflon? Was it, you know, yeah. soy? Know. You, you let me know. I know. Um, I don't eat nuts, and people say that I'm a bad vegan because I don't eat nuts, and I'm going to die. Right. So, I, 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 that's what I, I, you know, I wanted to be cremated, but now, like you say, I want to be on a tombstone. So, when yeah. that Tell happens, me what it was. they can say, yeah, you know, if you say, she lived to 120 and didn't eat nuts, go for it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But here's what I have to say about Teflon. So um, one is, if you're careful, as you should be, and you use um, utensils that have the silicone, that's going to keep it from okay. scratching and, and having that come off. But two, someone on the Facebook group, and I know you know this because you're online all the time, you get that one question and you hold in your breath because you're like, is this going to be the thing that starts the whole world war? Yeah. And the question was, so what's up with Teflon? Should I even be using this? Because so many people don't want to use it. So I actually didn't la allow comments until I did some research. And then I put up a couple of links. And then I opened it up for or comments. And no one commented. And it was around Teflon. 
And then what they're saying that the issue is around Teflon is when you're heating at 500 degrees or over and it's sitting there with no food on it and there's something about the fumes, we don't get there. We don't go over floor 100 That's in the right. air fryer. It's not on that long and we almost always have food on it. We might preheat for a couple of minutes. So I, don't, I too don't worry about it. And, and, and the right. one that I use all the time, the GoWise, has Teflon. Right. There is one, um, a, a couple brands that have ceramic coating which is different than ceramic. So um, I can tell you, I'm not going to give the, the name because I don't want to be mean, but I got one just to see if it was, you know, great. And this, you know, you probably noticed when you buy your air fryer, you need to run it for about 20 minutes to just kind of, I call it to get the new car smell out of it. Um, the new car smell never left this one with the yes. ceramic coating. Like I let it run for hours and so I don't use it. Right. And, and, you know, like, you know, this whole thing about eating black and food. Well, here's the thing. Even before the air fryer, I was eating black and food because that's how I like my Brussels sprouts. And I'm not right. going to worry because I eat pretty much an A-plus diet. And until you show me some real research that was done with vegetables, because all this stuff about acrylamides, to my knowledge, was done with grilled meats. Not exactly. With, and so so what I heard Dr. Gregor say on a Facebook Live is he's extrapolating and he's assuming, well, you know, the air fryer, I'm cooking it less. I'm cooking, like when I would right. have to make my oven roasted Brussels sprouts, it took almost an hour in the oven, whereas it's taking 20 minutes in the air fryer. And so I really like that. And as far as the Teflon is concerned, you know, they don't have, you know, they don't have to get one. We're just trying to make your life easier and more exactly. delicious. And if you're going to be a stickler on that, then that's fine. But then look what you're not going to be able to have. I know. Like, I know. You're not going to be able to and hassle you know, that like, potatoes. Your and point is a good one about like we're not trying to sell. Oh, there's my poutine. That's my. Yeah. Those are my. Yeah, uh, this is just ladies. this is just so like you could put you could make fries and put chili on them. Amazing. Yeah. I know chili. Oh my gosh, chili's great. Oh, and the right. buffalo. I've done this. The buffalo. Any recipe you have for buffalo buffalo cauliflower cauliflower wings, so good in the air fryer. It comes out great in the air fryer. It really does. Yeah. You know, and and it's funny. I I feel this the same way. Like when I'm out and I'm teaching classes, and people are like, I don't want to get an air fryer, and then I remind them, you know. You can actually use this book and not use an air fryer. You're right. just going to need to bake it. You're going to increase by 30 degrees, and right. it's going to take longer, and it won't be crunchy. Will it be good? Sure. Yeah. Will it be awesome and crispy yeah. and crunchy out, like out of an air fryer? Probably not. Right. Um, or you could put it in a whole bunch of oil in a skillet, but I wouldn't recommend that. I think it's, just, it's like ideal the way it is. You know, when my friend uh, Shada got the Goa, uh, not the Goa, she got the Cook's Essential, uh, she, her basket, her bottom basket peeled. And so she returned it and ended up getting the Phillips. And I, you know, I called the company. I said, well, I'm concerned because this is the one I have. And they said, well, it has a 90 day warranty, but if it were to peel after that, they would replace that part, not the whole thing. And when right. I called the company that actually made them, they said that since that has been happening, the peeling, they're making it like better now with like a thicker layer or something like yeah. that. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'm not that worried. What do you know about the one everybody, not, except for me, seems to be getting the most expensive one? It's $400. I think it's called a Breville Smart Oven. Um, so yeah. what, what, and they say it's a dehydrator too. How can you be both a dehydrator and an air fryer at the I same time? I don't know. Uh, if, 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 if Julie Hassan didn't say she loved it, I wouldn't believe anybody. But right. I love Julie Hassan and I trust her. So <laughs> when she got it, it's the Breville Smart Oven or something like it's, that. It's big it's, though. It's really big. It's really Right. It's, 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 think of a toaster of, oven on steroids, and it's it, and she says she likes the air fried texture, you know, and it's convection cooking. And the only thing that I can think of, I mean, like my oven has convection cooking, it doesn't air fry. So the only thing I can think of is because it's contained in size and it's working, and it must have a powerful fan. But I haven't used it, so I can't vouch yeah. for it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, like I always say, get the best one that you can afford. You know, it's funny because exactly. I always used to say that if the house was on fire and, you know, I knew that my husband and my dog Bailey were okay, I would just grab my Instant Pot. And now <laughs> I don't know what to do because do I grab my Instant Pot or my air fryer? Do I grab both? Of them? You know, because I really, I think, you know, I'm, uh, like the girl that I just mentioned, Shada, her kitchen's being remodeled and she has no oven and she's able to eat healthfully and the same way she ate before just with the air fryer and the instant pot exactly so that's all she needs exactly. and so for people traveling in an RV even you could you could take these camping the air fryer and the instant pot as long as you have a place to plug it in you know yep absolutely and in my kitchen this time of year we have a heat wave going on this week and i have bamboo covers over my glass top stove i've got the electric pressure cooker on one i've got the air fryer on the other i am not going to overheat this house mm -hmm. i refuse but I'm also not going to give up eating delicious, hot, 
Christy yummy food just because I'm having heat waves. <laughs> so you, I, you know, I was re- just you know, glancing at your resume again. I didn't know this about you. So there's a cooking, a, there's a culinary school in New Mexico. You, um, tell me about it because I've, I've always thought about moving to New Mexico. Tell us about it. Oh my that. gosh, I love New Mexico so much. So the University of New Mexico has a campus in Taos. And Taos is only a three-hour drive to Colorado oh, wow. Springs. And so I um, got in touch with the culinary program about a year and a half ago. And I said, you know, I'm not a trained chef, but I write cookbooks. And I think that future chefs need to understand that vegan or not, they need to know how to respond to the the changing um, Mm -hmm. demands of dining, you know, customers who are dining out. And they hired me and I teach um, every fall, I teach the fundamentals of vegan cooking to future chefs. That is so, I did not know that about you. I'm so proud of you. And that is very, very exciting. Because I, you. you know, I agree with you. It's just it, when you go places and they're so un, when you order a vegan meal, it it's, can be it, in a place that doesn't know can be so uninspiring because that should be on the curriculum for every non-vegan culinary school. You know, exactly, you know, exactly. And that's yeah. very good, and it only will yeah. help them to have better food choices. And who knows, you know, regular people might eat this stuff just because it's so delicious. And I yes. didn't know you had a radio show. Tell me about it, because uh, is it like on iTunes or? Uh, it eventually goes there. I produce locally in Colorado Springs in Studio 809, and it's syndicated in Janesville, Wisconsin, and it's been running for um, almost two years. So after it airs um, locally, and then it airs the following week in Wisconsin, um, and, then, and then it's available on iTunes and SoundCloud. And so it's really fun. I just have people who are doing different things as a, a, around veganism, whether it's food, environment, um, activism. It's really fun. So what is it called and how do people listen? Or they can only it's called, listen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called Easy Vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, Easy Vegan with JL Fields. And you can listen to it from my website. It's right on the front page, but it's also on SoundCloud and iTunes. And um, if you're in Colorado Springs, you can listen at Studio 809. And if you're in Janesville, Wisconsin, on 103.5 FM. Right. How long of a show is it? And do you do it at a particular time each week? 30-minute show. Um, it comes out on Tuesdays. It airs um, on Tuesdays, I believe, at 9 a.m. Central um, in Janesville. And, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot. I've been having fun with it. Do you, yeah. like, do you like being the interviewer or the interviewee? I like being the interviewer. Me too. Me too. I, I, you know, I get interviewed a lot, and it's like I feel like I'm, it's so boring because I already know this about myself, and right. I feel like I'm telling the same story. But when I interview people, I get to I interview people that are interesting, that I like, and, and just because I love finding out about people, and and so yeah. yeah, it is fun doing your own thing like that. So good, cool, easy vegan. Who is the most interesting person you've interviewed so far? Oh my gosh, the most interesting. Well, you know, um, I loved talking to Steve Jenkins from um, Esther the Wonder Pig. Mm-hmm. Um, he's amazing. He's so truthful, authentic. But I think the funniest thing that ever happened was Dr. Michael Greger walking on his treadmill during the entire interview on live radio. <laughs> was he heard something. Oh, I got it. <laughs> that, that, that is hilarious. That, are, are, now, are you still cooking the thing behind you or is that done? That's done. Oh, great. Okay, cool. All right. Yes. And so there you go. This is beautiful air fried tofu. If you've wow. been on the fence, look at this. If you've been on the fence, air fried tofu. And look, I'm going to take a if bite of this. If you've been on the so, fence, th- mm. look at this grilled. I would take a bite of this, but it would get stuck in my teeth. I mean, I this is better I than did grilled. It, I did it Wait, how do I do that? Yeah, right there. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Wow. It looks all spongy and perfect and all that. So, you know, and the other thing is, is even if something like people worry if it sticks, it doesn't stick forever. It's not like you yeah. won't get it off. You can soak it. You don't want to, if it's Teflon, you don't want to be taking a steel, you know, steel wool and like doing this. But I've never had a problem even before I knew no. this when I, I was trying to do this oven roasted ratatouille and it was an epic fail. In that particular recipe, it was too wet. And, and yeah, it stuck and I let it cool yeah. and I soaked it and you know, it was fine. And you something like this. We just got bristles on the end. Right. So I'm going to put the top one. And exactly, and remember that the basket and the container the basket sits in can go on the top shelf of your dishwasher Absolutely. if you have one. And I tell people, like with the cauliflower, um, the buffalo cauliflower, it's battered. Heck yeah, it's going to be really messy. And then you know what? You just wash it. But normally, when you like wash, so we just make two batches of tofu in this. This out. And it's probably not, it's probably not even that dirt. No, it, it's it. not. I mean, there's a, a couple of crumbs on the bottom. I know the same. Yeah, thing. that's two batches of tofu. And and I don't even necessarily wash it between recipes if it's just like going from mushrooms to corn. I don't I don't care. You know, if it's vegetable stuff, if it's all shit. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's so so cool. Yeah. So do you have a copy of your? I have it in the back room, but I don't want to leave 
the computer. Do, can you show your uh, pressure cooking book? I really like that. Yeah, that's a good yeah. one too. That's a, so I'm thinking you did a pressure cook, you did air fryer. So it seems like you have a theme where you're doing cookbooks <laughs> for appliances. So what is the next, the dehydrator book or what, what's, what's next on the horizon? for so your funny. Cookbooks? I always say that if I hear about something that um, people rave about cooking meat in it, then I want to make it vegan. Um, and so I'm not going to tell you because I'm afraid someone else is going to jump ahead. But I actually do have a plan. Okay. Um, but, I want, but I have exciting news about this book. Um, this book came out in January 2015, and Corto is going to re-release it in January with 20 new recipes written specifically for multi-cookers, like an Instant Pot or Favor oh, or Go Why. So wow. I'm pretty proud of that, too. So 20 more recipes coming soon. Wow, that's really, really cool. So, you know, I noticed it's funny because with the Instant Pot, or not just the Instant Pot, but when I started teaching pressure cooking, people were like, oh, you know, they can explode. Well, that, that's crazy. They don't explode. Maybe the right. stovetop ones 50 years ago did. Are you hearing any such urban legends about the, the like, like the air fryer, like we were about the pressure cooking or people? No. Just, yeah, good, you know? No. Um, but I do tell people to be cautious because I get you will you may have seen it on our Facebook group. The funniest thing is like when people put a tortilla in just to kind of get it warm or toast it up. Some of those air fryers, those fans are so powerful that the, the tortilla goes right up to the heating element <laughs> and all of a sudden you smell something. So it's, it's kind of like with most most appliances, other than with the obvious exception being like the Instant Pot or, or the Go Ice Multi Cooker or Fake World Multi Cooker, you can walk away and forget you were cooking and it will just stop and go on warm. But most times if you're cooking, you kind of need to be around. And I would recommend, especially if you're cooking yeah. loose things, right. um, that, that, you know, tend to it. Tend to your air fryer, just in case. I know that they only go up to 400. What is the yes. lowest setting? Are, are they all the same or do different companies have different they're, settings? They're basically the same. And, but and obviously, I, you know, you may have some folks in Canada, but um, 300 to 400 is, is basically the range. Yeah. And, and what's the most time? Or is there, like, because I'm sure they wouldn't want to have you put two hours on it. So I know. No, but Go, go wise goes up to 30. Um, and, you know, and some things do take that long. So if you were going to take something that was going to cook for an hour in your oven, it could take 30 minutes in your air fryer. Yeah. And so um, if you have an air fryer that doesn't go up to 30, then just just program it for 10 and then come back and do it another 10 and another 10. I do that sometimes if I know, if I know that shaking is important to a recipe. Instead of setting it for 20, I set it for 10. As soon as I hear a beep, I go and shake it, and then I do 10 more minutes. Right. And that way it's, it's, it's actually, it's, I think that's a good way to do it because it reminds you to shake it because otherwise you can get busy, and then like yeah. even with the corn, you, you forget to flip it, and it's really only cooked on one side. I know mine exactly. has sort of like this, I guess I call it the home button, that if you press it, it just automatically goes to 370, 15 minutes. That's sort of like yeah. its default setting. Do, um, do you recommend that people get a I, – I know that the one you have and the one I have is digital, but some of them, yeah. I guess, are more like a little dial. Do you recommend yeah. a digital over the dial one, or it doesn't really matter? I've experienced no difference. I used an analog. Um, I used the Barberware analog when I was in New Mexico teaching last fall, because that's when I was working on the book. So when I was in Colorado, I was using a digital go-wise. I was using an analog. And the only difference is this. The analog, many of them skip from 320 to 350 to 400. So if you want to do some precision cooking where 370 is important to you, you're going to have to find that spot. And you might just want to mark it on your, on your air fryer. So, oh, I see. So, but other so, yeah, than that, that they that, cook beautifully. Uh, they, they cook really well. There's one air fryer that we haven't talked about, and I've never used, but there's somebody in our group named Jared who is wonderful, and he's helping educate people. You know, air fryers are new. The, the ones we're talking about are kind of new, but these have been around for a while, and it was the T-Fall ActiFry. This came out years ago. I don't know if you remember those, and that paddle that would move food around. Like, And everyone bought them for the potatoes. Well, it turns out they're air fryers, and they do work well. The difference is that they only cook at 356. So um, some foods might take longer, but they still come out really, really well. So I want people who are watching to know that if you do have an active fry or have a tea fall or have one of those with that paddle, it's going to work. But when you look at a recipe, you don't get to set the temperature just set the time and keep checking it. And some foods are too fragile for um, a paddle. Like if I were doing um, a eggplant parmesan and I, and I used like a panko breadcrumbs, I'm not, I don't want a paddle to push my eggplant around. You can remove that paddle 
and then it'll just sit there. But then you're going to need to flip it over because it doesn't have the holes in the bottom. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do, do you are there? Um, I know that I keep seeing other accessories that people are getting for their air fryer. Do you know what yes. some of those are and why we might need them? Or yes, I have a few. Um, so these were actually designed specifically for air fryers. But I'm going to have good news for you if you don't want to buy accessories. So these are just casserole and baking pans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can bake a pie. I have a recipe for a torte. I can do a, a breakfast casserole with like tofu and veggies um, or the vegan egg. And as long as it fits in the basket of your air fryer, you're good to go. But the good news is you might have something like this already in your kitchen, like a ramekin. It's ceramic. Mm -hmm. Don't go buy accessories. Go look in, and look to see what you already yeah. have. Here you've got, a fruit, you've got a fruit collar yep. right here. Yep. Yep. And so that's what these are great for. Now, some accessories that I think are super cool is um, there's a, a, a rack. Um, oh, yeah. I love that one. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you for showing this photo. Sure. No, they, these are beautiful. Wait, so is there anything? Uh, the ramekins, I'm guessing, are made out of um, China? Is there anything? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't put plastic in an air fryer. Is there anything no. that, I mean, can glass go in? Can metal go in? Yes. Can China go in? Just it can go in your oven. It, it can, can go in your air fryer. So technically, uh, um, a silicone mold could go in there then. Just yes. Like, yeah, because it. Okay, that's good to know. Good to. Yeah. Do, you, do you does yours have a preheat function? And if it doesn't, do you recommend preheating? Because I know mine has this button that says P, and it preheats at four hundred for three minutes. Yeah, you can preheat, but um, I don't do it all the time because I, it's kind of like with um, with pressure cooking. You know how you can soak your beans or not soak your beans, and for me, it depends on what happened that day. Yeah, right. <laughs> if I did, um, and so some recipes, the recipes I really like to preheat are the ones that might have some kind of batter on them or some kind of coating where you want it to, as soon as it hits the basket, it's got some heat that's going to keep everything intact. But you, it's not necessary. Right. You know. I even though they're new, a little bit newer to the vegan world, air fryers have been around for a while. They're not, yep. they're not a new thing, just like pressure cooking isn't a new thing. I remember years ago, we have a, uh, it's a vegetarian restaurant, one of the oldest ones in California called Follow Your Heart out in Canoga Park. And they always had air fries, but they were these big things that were like, you know, $4,000 that nobody could really afford for wow. their home. And now, you know, for like you say, is like the lowest price one I've seen was at Walmart for $69. Most people could afford this this, this appliance now if they wanted to. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And hey, you know, it's a lot cheaper than, than buying stuff and it's a lot healthier than going to McDonald's and getting French fries. Plus the fries are so much better. And when I see so people better. post on your group like, oh, they didn't send me. They didn't. And I'm like, they didn't even taste them in my house because yeah. my food in the air fryer <laughs> is delicious. And like you said, your husband was convinced after the first bite. I mean, it's so user friendly that my husband, who really is very culinarily challenged, I mean, he can steam greens in an instant pot and microwave a potato. He knows how to use the air fryer. When I'm out of town, he makes his own air fries. Or you exactly. know, a lot of times he'll do cubes, but but yeah. you know, it, it, I figure if, if Charles can use it, you can use it. You don't exactly. have to be a chef. At and all. you know what? And, and I'm sure AJ, you, you've worked with a lot of people who have the same issue, which is we're probably surrounded by a lot of people who are eating vegan or plant based, and their partner isn't. Right. And what I love about the air fryer is it's that thing that people get excited about, and then you can put something in there that is just like, oh my gosh, that's crispy and it's delicious, and it doesn't seem vegan. It just is crispy, yeah. yummy food. And I see a lot of people say, I can't believe my husband's going through this cookbook, or I can't believe my husband said he wants to make this. And you know, not not that men don't cook men, so don't be mad at me. Right. And I'm just saying that's where I hear it more. And so I think that's what's fun about it too is if you are, and if you have kids, I think it's such a cool thing for kids. If they come home after school, they can actually make a fun little snack that's not labor intensive that they can't get hurt. I mean, obviously, it can get hot like anything. But um, but it's, it's something that kids can just push a couple buttons right. and make something there's really healthy. Quickly. Really, there's probably less buttons on the air fryer than even on the Instant Pot. And I still exactly. don't know what all those buttons on the Instant Pot and they promised to give me some training because pretty much I, I, I just pushed the manual. I will give one That's piece of advice. <laughs> Do not put your iPhone on the air fryer while it's cooking because I got this. I don't know why I did that. I mean, because I, when it's not on, I sometimes like watch little podcasts and one day it was on and like, oh my God, I almost like melt. I end up putting my iPhone in the, I hope nobody's watching this under warranty, but yeah, don't, so the thing is, is have some space, like don't do yes. it in a corner, it needs some room to, 
to do its thing. And, and it really yes, does. Let's, let's explain that to people because the, the word heat comes through from the back and, and it, it's not a big space. But I told my mother, I bought my mom. My, my rule is wherever I go visit, they need an air fryer and, and a pressure cooker. And an instant pot, so, right? Yeah. yeah. So I send that to everybody. And so I got my mom an air fryer and I said, Mom, all you need to remember is pull this out before you use it. So the very first time she used it, she didn't pull it out and it completely melted the plate to the electrical outlet. That, so it's yeah. hot, it, it, but just remember, it's different than, than heating a huge oven and preheating it for 15 minutes and having it on for an hour and then waiting for the temperature to come down. The air fryer is going to be on and off in 15 to 20 minutes. Right, and, and I would say that if you live in a hot part of the world like I do in the San Fernando Valley, any money you spend on an air fryer, you're going to save an air conditioning cost from not turning on your oven. You want to exactly. hear something funny? So I have an audition tomorrow for this culinary school that just popped up in the neighborhood. Somebody told me about it. It's like literally blocks away. And I'm like, wow. So I sent them my resume and my photo and they, they want me to come in for like an audition to, to, to like demo and make some recipes. And so right. I emailed them and I said, okay, uh, do I, do you have everything or do I need to bring my own, uh, you know, equipment? And they write, oh, well, we're a full commercial kitchen. You know, we have everything. And I wrote back, I go, including an Instant Pot and an air fryer. And they go, no, we don't have that. And I'm thinking, how can you have everything when you don't have the two most important appliances exactly. for a healthy vegan kitchen? So hopefully they're not watching that either, no disrespect. But I just thought it was funny because what is everything to them, it, to me, everything is the air fryer and the Instant Pot. And, and you know, it's, of course, it's nice to have a blender and a food processor. But the, yeah. with those two things, you know, when people say it's too hard to eat healthy, no, it's not. Get a pressure no, cooker, get a, get an air fryer, and, man, your food will be amazing. And you can get yourself a book like this if you need some inspiration. <laughs> or JL also has a pre – it's so funny that you've written books for my two favorite appliances. So I guess you're going to have to write a dehydrating book next because that's one of the okay, other appliances that, that I use. <laughs> but that's not hard. I mean, dehydrating – you just put it in. I mean, like, I do you even need a book. It's you like need time. time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so that's great. Well, and, um, so what is this? You write dining reviews. Now, what does that mean for Colorado Springs Gazette? What is that? Is that a magazine, a newspaper? No, it's it's the daily newspaper wow. in Colorado Springs. And I pitched them three years ago to actually just keep me in mind if they ever wanted to do something around veganism. And they said, why don't you just start writing a monthly review? And I've been doing it for three years now. So when people say, ugh, the dining, vegan dining is so hard in Colorado Springs, I'm like, well, I've, I've been going to a lot of places, and I'm here to say over 36 so far, um, that you really can find some really good vegan food in Colorado Springs. So, yeah, it's been yeah. fun. Well, you're, you're really, you're, you're, you're everywhere. You have, like, as you say, you're Gemini, aren't you? Because you got your fingers. I'm a Virgo. Oh, you're a Virgo. I, I don't know yeah. what I, Well, you got your fingers in a lot of pies, so that's pretty <laughs> cool. In a lot of vegan pies, that is. Yes. So if you had to just have, like, one sentence to, and again, I don't like the word convince, but to, to uh, articulate to people why they need an air fryer. Because you know what they're saying is, I already have already, you know, you yeah. know you're, this is what they say to me. Well, I already got an Instant Pot because of you. Like, like I'm punishing them because they have an Instant Pot. Their <laughs> life has changed. And everybody that I've told that they need an air fryer, at first they're like this, and they're like, oh, my God, you were right. So if you had to tell my viewers, your viewers, anybody out there, why, especially if they're vegan and especially if they're healthy, they need an air fryer, what would you say? I would say that if you want to add texture to your plant-based diet with using little to new, no oil and not heat up your house and have no mess to clean up, there's no reason to not have one. Right. And what I would say, best damn fries ever. Yeah. Yes. And your fries are good. I yeah. love your daily Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? The one thing we forgot to say is... Um, it, like, okay, so I make bean burgers all the time or sometimes yeah. bean burgers without beans. And that's one of the things. I'm not really into freezing things too much, but for some reason, my homemade bean burgers, they taste great. And I used to just, you know, microwave them. But, man, you can air fry them. You can take your yes. homemade bean burger, air fry them. And what I love to do is I roll them into little balls, and then I can make meatballs. And I, I can do that with the batter from scratch yeah. I love not having to turn on my oven. I, anything yep. to not have to turn it on. So that was the other thing. At the end. And you know, you can buy frozen vegan bean burgers at the store now at Whole Foods. Of course. And, yeah. and again, anything you can do in a microwave or an oven, it's just going to taste better in the air fryer. Even like yeah. a simple, like my husband eats this meal a couple times a week. He makes it himself. He microwaves a russet potato, an organic russet potato, and puts in roasted corn and beans and puts on salsa and guacamole. And that's his meal. And then now what we do is after, instead of like heating it in the microwave, we heat it in the air fryer, and it just takes it to another level. Another it really level. does it. And, and you know, you brought up a great point, and I know your viewers like this. 
bulk cooking. That's what we tell the people, you know, we tell people get an instant pot, pressure cook, make food on the weekends. What you just said, making that the, the bean um, patties in advance. Or I have a recipe for, I call it mashed potatoes and kale made, you know, in the instant pot that you can then put it, just make it to oh my little God. nuggets. They're like little breakfast. puff balls, They're, right? Yes, but you can do it on Saturday or Sunday and keep it in the refrigerator or freeze it. And you can pop it in the air fryer yeah. cold or frozen, mm -hmm. and it will cook beautifully. Yeah. So you actually can bulk cook and air fry yeah. it yeah. later in the I think I think the Instant Pot in the air fryer is a, is a match made in heaven. I, I think, think so every, too. every kitchen needs one, and certainly every vegan kitchen needs one, and every healthy kitchen needs one. It's been such a pleasure. It's just this, this has really gone by really fast. Is there anything else yes. you'd like to add about where you'll be speaking or what you'll be doing or how people can get in touch with you and, 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 and uh, subscribe to your blog or participate in your Facebook group? Well, thank you. So I am on a book tour right now. So if you go to my blog, jlgoesvegan.com, and click the Vegan Air Fryer tab, you're going to see that I'm going all over the place between now and November. And I have a Colorado Springs Culinary, um, it's, it's called the Colorado Springs Vegan Cooking Academy, and I have classes going through November, and you can find that on my website too. Right. Any and join me on Facebook. I have two Facebook groups, Vegan Pressure Cooking and Vegan Air Frying Enthusiast Group. I didn't know you had a pressure cooking group. Any chance you'll be anywhere in LA, or have you already been? I know you were recently. I was just there, but I think I'm going to come back because I met a couple of people who want to bring me back. So you and I need to be Yeah, right. Let me know because I, I will make you the most delicious pressure cooked and air fried meal. So thank yes. you so much. I love your passion. I love your smile. You're adorable. I love what you're doing out in Colorado and everywhere. You really are everywhere. And uh, you're like MasterCard everywhere you want to be. So, <laughs> so thank you so much, JL Fields. Thank you for this beautiful air frying oh, book and your you. pressure cooking book. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Healthy Living. I'm Chef AJ, and with the help of my air fryer, I make healthy taste delicious.